Hello friends, in this video we will be discussing about WNT beta catenin signaling pathway. This pathway is essential for developmental processes and controls diverse of functions related to embryonic development. This pathway consists of two transmembrane receptors. One is Prisilo G protein receptor as shown in the red color and the other one is LRP receptor, lipoprotein receptor related protein as shown in the blue color. Both these proteins simultaneously receive extracellular signal in the form of WNT proteins from which it gets its name. Also remember that we use sometimes the naming as beta catenin pathway because it is the beta catenin molecule in the cytosol which transduces the signal or we can say regulates the WNT signal in the pathway. Now let's get to the pathway directly. We have two conditions for the pathway. First is when there is no WNT signal present. Second is when there is presence of signal that's WNT protein is present. First of all let's discuss the first condition when there is no WNT protein available. At that time there will be no signal imported into the cell. Then within the cell we have some components of the pathway of which first we have disheveled protein in the cytoplasm. Then we see we have exon protein then we have GSK3 protein and also we have CK1 proteins assembled together. And also we have a beta catenin protein which is phosphorylated here. Then on to the left we have APC protein also. This whole assembly is termed as degradation complex except this beta catenin molecule. The CK1 protein and GSK3 protein both phosphorylate the beta catenin and then beta catenin is ubiquinated which is then subjected to degradation by proteasomes as shown in the diagram. Now looking at the nucleus we see we have a DNA molecule present there on which there are WNT responsive genes. But these genes are kept inactive by Grochu corepressor protein which stops or halts the gene regulatory proteins LEF, TCF on DNA. So to get the expression of WNT genes the beta catenin is needed to displace the Grochu complex. But in absence of WNT signal as shown in this pathway the beta catenin fails to migrate into the nucleus as it's subjected to degradation by proteasomes. So here in this pathway WNT genes will not be expressed. This is the signaling in absence of WNT signal. Now let's see when there is presence of WNT signal. And at that time WNT protein comes in and transduces the signal towards the internal components of pathway via LRP and Frizzler receptors. The first event in this pathway is the recruitment of disheveled protein towards the Frizzler receptor as it is the negative regulator of WNT pathway. After that there is recruitment of degradation complex towards the plasma membrane more towards the LRP receptor where all these degradation complex components are getting inactivated. Now in the cytosol the beta catenin remains off from the degradation complex and in this way the beta catenin phosphorylation is blocked with which it's not ubiquinated and ultimately the beta catenin is not degraded by proteasome. Then we see the unphosphorylated beta catenin accumulates in the cytosol and then migrates into the nucleus where it binds to the LEF, TCF proteins and displays the Grochu complex with which the gene regulatory components are activated and we get the expression of WNT genes. So this is how the WNT signal plays role in the activation and deactivation of WNT genes by regulating the degradation of beta catenin molecule. So this is all about WNT signaling pathway. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe this channel. Thanks.